Greetings, I'm Berent, and welcome to Meet Me at the Table. Today we're going to be continuing our playthrough of Kingdom Death Monster, and there he is, the level 3 antelope. We've taken him on before, but this time we'll see if we can get him again. Hopefully it comes down to us winning and him not. Now before we start, I do want to go over all the stuff we have laid out on our board. Now we do have to start with some acanthus plants because of our screaming antelope and a bug patch down here. Now, of course, we did also draw two small grass tiles, these tiles right here, and we also have a survivor corpse over here. Now, because of our strategist that we have on Fanbin, we're able to place down one of these giant stone faces that is off over here in the board, because I'm not sure how much it's gonna help us in this one, because I didn't actually bring the bow to this fight. Is that the wrong thing to do? Mm, maybe, we shall see. But we're all set up here. Now we have to get the IE deck set up for our Screaming Antelope. Our Screaming Antelope, of course, is going to start with a mountain of stuff. He's got his legendary horns, Diabolical, Hypermetabolism, Trample, and Indomitable. He also gets an Invasion token along with his plus two speed and plus two damage tokens as well. With eight move and 12 toughness, we'll see what we can do. Now his AI deck is going to consist of every card he has. So we're going to do a little shuffle, shuffle here, shuffle, 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 and a truffle shuffle at that to get these all set up there. And of course we got our hit location deck, which we're going to give a truffle shuffle to as well. And we're going to put that down. And now let's quickly go over all all the things he has again, hopefully I won't forget any. So of course he does have his two plus one speed tokens, two plus one damage tokens, an evasion token, and he's got his diabolical trait. This is the one where he is going to, at the end of the monster's turn, target a random survivor in the trample zone and full move through the target. Move the monster through and past the survivor. If there is no target, full move forward. All right, we've got that. We have his legendary of corns, of course. It gives him a plus four to toughness tokens and plus one speed token. Uh, screaming Antelope possibly old. Now, of course, when a survivor with less than five courage ends their activation to the Screaming Antelope, they suffer one brain damage per monster level. So we're going to be suffering three brain damage every time we stop adjacent to him when we do our activation. Now, I did kind of mess that up the last time we did this. I'm going to make sure we get this right. And then it says, when the monster is defeated, you gain the legendary Horn Strange resource, and good for us because we used it to make the Lance of Longinus. We're going to get another one. Of course, he's got his hypermetabolism, which is absolutely devastating. When the monster consumes terrain or gear, the monster gains a plus one speed token. That's ridiculous. And of course, he's got Trample, which means he is going to do monster level to a random hit location every time the monster collides with a survivor. So that's terrible. Now, of course, we do have to get our plus four toughness tokens and the plus one speed token. So here are our plus four toughness tokens. I'm gonna to place them right out here. And we're gonna add another plus one speed token. So he's up to plus three speed tokens. And spoiler alert, he's probably gonna get another one because of this hyper metabolism card. I don't know how you can ever start this fight without him gaining a speed token from eating an acanthus plant. Unless maybe he had the ability to somehow starting before the monster. So there you have it. Our survivors are ready to take on our antelope. Do you think we have what it takes to take down a level three antelope? If so, then I need you to meet me at the table. Since we have no way to stop our antelope from going first, we're gonna go ahead and draw his AI card. He has found Stomp, closest knockdown survivor. Furthest threat in field of view in range. If there's no target, we are gonna graze. So his movement, of course, is eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It's like they planned this fight or something. He's just one away from being able to get to one of our characters. So sadly, he is gonna go ahead and graze, which is terrible. So if we look at Graze, of course, it says the monster full moves to the closest acanthus plant and ends its turn. If the monster is 
on or adjacent to the acanthus plant, archive the terrain and heal one wound. If there are no acanthus plants on the showdown board, instead we'll move forward in a straight line. Well, there is a lot of acanthus plants out here, and I have strategically placed them so that he's actually three squares away from all of them. So he can go to this one right here, which is exactly where I want him to go. One, two, three, four, and I can either end him on or adjacent to an acanthus plant. So we're going to end him right there. Maybe one, two, three. Nope, he's going to have to stop right there because he would be adjacent to this one. So we're going to go ahead and have him eat this nom, 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 Pac-Man style. And this thing is gone. And of course, because of our hyper metabolism card, he is going to gain a plus one speed token. So he's up to four plus one speed tokens. Now, because Grace is going to make him end its turn, that means that his t Diabolical card does not fire off because Diabolical states that he is going to have to, as it's stated on here, um, at the end of the monster's turn. It's not at the end of the turn. It is ending its turn. I hope that makes sense. But we're going to go ahead now into our turn and see what we can do to this antelope before an absolutely monstrous amount of stuff happens to us because, of course, those four speed tokens, oh, it's going to be pretty tough. Our first person to go is going to be Fendrin. But before we do, I have Quixotic. This is a disorder that is on Gold Moon. And it says down here, if you are insane, when you depart, gain plus one survival, any plus one strength token. Now she already has max survival, but she is going to gain the plus one strength token. I forgot to give that to her when we left our settlement. Now, of course, none of our characters have five courage at all. So if any of them end their activation adjacent to this thing, they are going to suffer three brain damage, which isn't going to be too bad for some of our people, but it's going to be pretty devastating for a few others. We are going to start with him. Now, he also has a disorder as well called Traumatize. Whenever you end your activation adjacent to a monster, you are knocked down. So not only is he going to lose three, he's going to be knocked down as well. Also, I gave him one of the fresh Acanthus plants. That allows me to fully heal one hit location, including injury levels and armor points. So he has that in his possession. He's going to go ahead and dash. Well, first he's going to use a surge action. He's going to go down to nine to go ahead and grab this right here. So we're going to go ahead and roll a d10 and see what our survivor corpse has for us. He got a two. He gets to add two to it. So it's a four. It's probably going to be nothing. Let's see what we found. We found gain plus two insanity, any random basic resource archive this terrain card. All right, actually, that's really good. So we're going to go ahead, archive this, and gain two insanity and a basic resource. So we're going to grab our random basic resources here. Go ahead and give him a quick truffle shuffle, grab one card. We have got a monster organ. So he's going to go ahead and keep this. Now, of course, if you consume this, archive this card, roll a d10 and a six plus, you contract a parasite. Archive all consumable gear in your gear grid now. Oh, barf. All right, we're never going to consume that. That'd be terrible. All right, we're going to go ahead now and also gain two insanity, which is going to bring him up to nine. He's now going to dash, bringing his survival down to eight. And I'm going to make sure to show you the die every time, because a few times last time I don't think I did. I might have missed a survival or two. One, two, three, four, five. No, I lied. It's going to go one, two, three, four, five to right there. Perfect. Now he's going to spend his movement. And what he's going to do is he is, of course, going to use his screaming coat, which allows him to spend his move to full move forward in a straight line. If your move four plus spaces and stop adjacent to the monster, it suffers knockback one and negative one toughness until the end of the turn. It's going to go one, two, three, four, and knock him back one. Now I could spend my activation if I want because of my screaming armor. And it says skewer. After you slam, spend your activation to move one space and activate a melee weapon with a plus two strength. If the wound with the spear, apply the wound roll result to the next selected hit location, this attack. I am not going to do that. The reason why is because of his traumatized card. Not only will lose three insanity, he'd be knocked down if I do the extra speed. He negative one toughness is pretty good right now. And I'm using that Lance of Longinus with nine toughness, or nine strength, sorry. So I'm actually going to think we're going to be okay. He is now going to use his activation to attack him with the Lance of Longinus. So with our Lance of Longinus, we're going to be rolling for a six plus. We're going to use two dice because I don't have any extra speed with him. So we're going to see how we do. We got a seven and a three. That's one hit. I'll take it. Any hits we can do is awesome. We have found the giant tongue. Negative two toughness to wound this location. And if I wound him, blood and spittle erupt from the screaming antelope's wounded undermaw. If the wound roll result was suffered was even, I take a brain damage. If it was odd, I gain an insanity. And if I can clearly hit it, I get a screaming antelope gear. Let's hope that happens. Let's go ahead and roll our two wound roll up. And we got a seven, so that's an odd number. Plus, we have seven plus nine is 16. 
our antelope now has 12 plus its plus four toughness tokens, which brings it to 16. But I do get negative one because, of course, I did hit him with my slam maneuver. So he's got 12, 13, 14, 15. I was able to wound him. Plus, of course, I get plus one, two, plus two strength for being who I am. So we did plenty of strength. We were able to wound him. And since it was an odd number, I'm going to gain an insanity. That's going to bring his insanity up to 10. That was a pretty good first attack against this evil diabolical antelope. So we have start our epic climb to defeating the antelope. We only have to do a total of 22. So we have 21 left. Oh, what a great start. The next thing we're going to do is go ahead and move into Gold Moon's Tomb. But before we do that, there was a debate about the Man Mask. And I was wondering what we should do about this. I got a lot of great comments, and most of them were, this would be kind of cool at some point. But right now, think of all the resources you get. So we are going to put that in that pool of saliva and go ahead and turn this back into its raw materials, which means we are going to get an astronomical amount of resources going into the next Lantern Year, especially if we can even take this guy down. That'd be awesome. But we're going to move into Gold Moon's turn now. And Gold Moon's going to go one, two, three, four, five. Then she's going to dash into the tall grass. See, look at this. I planned this out. Rahaha. And now we're going to go ahead and use her activation to attack the screaming antelope. Of course, this could all be foiled if he draws a trap or anything else that makes him run away. Gold Moon's going to go ahead and use her round leather shield blood paint whistling mace super combo. She can use these two things because they're adjacent to the blood paint. And she's going to use her leather shield to block. So she's not going to hit with that. But she is going to hit with the whistling mace, which needs a six plus to hit. But our thing's got a plus one evasion token, so that's a seven plus to hit. But I do have my zero presence fighting card, which states that you gain plus one strength when attacking a monster from its blind spot. And whenever you attack a monster, you are always considered to be in its blind spot. So that means I'm going to get an extra one. So that means I'm only going to need a six plus to see if we hit. And we got a total of two hits. And on a perfect hit, I am allowed to reveal the next AI card and place it on top or bottom of the deck as I see fit. We have found Bite. I'm not too worried about this one. We're going to leave it on top. I do get a bleeding token, which could be bad if it actually does happen, but hopefully it doesn't happen. Now, we do get to draw our two hit location cards and see what they are. We have found the Gnarled Horns. Failure. If the attacker is adjacent to the monster, their weapon is stuck, tugging frantically, it comes loose. But you stumble and suffer knockback five barf. That's terrible. I don't like that one at all. Let's see what this one is. Restless inner thigh. Your attack disables the monster's powerful running muscles. The screaming antelope gains negative one movement token. Oh, that one's awesome. All right, now we do have one more trick up our sleeve. We've got our king's step. It says whenever you attack after drawing hit locations, but before rolling to wound, you may choose one hit location drawn and discard it and draw a new location. Traps will, of course, cancel those effects. So I am risking it, but I don't want to be knocked back. We're going to get rid of this one, and we're going to draw another card and see what it is. Come on, not the trap. We have found a delic de delicate inverted knee. And it says here, if you hit with a club or shield, you clobber the monster. Game plus two luck when attempting to wound this location. Oh, this is going to be perfect. Oh my gosh, can't get any better. All right, we're going to start with the inverted knee. So I'm going to go ahead and roll our dice and see how we do. We got a two. Well, that didn't hit anything, so that was a big miss. Darn, that would have been really good. All right, instead, we're going to go for the restless inner thigh. Let's see how that goes. We got a seven. I still don't think that's enough because she can't actually hit anything. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. She got a total of twelve, and this thing's got a 16, 15 defense right now. Well, I needed a perfect 10. Wow, this guy's out of control again. All right, so she missed. Is it even worth surging to attack with her? I got her where I want her. Let's 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 hold her. I'm not going to surge yet. We'll see how the rest of this goes. Maybe we might surge her as time goes on. I'm going to leave these right here because we're probably going to be fighting him again with our next person. Kaz is going to move next. He's going to dash to go one, two, three, four, five. And I forgot that I have to go ahead and tick Gold Moon's die down to a nine. I even said I was going to do this, and I didn't even do it. Now, he's got the full leather gear, or not leather gear, the rawhide gear set. So we're going to go ahead and see if he keeps the survival. He does not. He goes down to nine. Now, he's also going to go ahead and surge his cat eye circlet. Bring, oh, he didn't get that either. So he's going to go to an eight. But the cat eye circlet does allow me to look at the top three cards of the hit location deck and decide what I want to do with them. Let's see what we have found. The giant teeth, super dense. That's okay. We can still hit that. If the attacker hits the club or shield, that's not going to help. Failure. Grasping hands. Make rude gestures you, at you. Startled. You gain plus one insanity and have to lose your composure. Spend one 
to regain. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and put that. We'll put this one at the end. That's fine. All right. Now I don't have any. Oh, I'm gonna put the shield one there. Okay, I'm actually gonna put the shield on the bottom because if our next person attacks and doesn't get enough, I can maybe bring that other character. She could surge now, and we know that club one's on top. All right, that's going to be the end of his action, I think. He's still got his action and his actual movement left to do. He surged and he also dashed. Now it's her turn. She's going to dash. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then she's going to move. One, two, three, four, five, six right over here. That'll be just fine. Now she's going to go ahead and go ahead and she's going to attack with that cat fang knife. We might blow straight past that club card with our Cat Fang Knife because I'm going to get two attacks with that and I'm going to get another attack with our White Lion Armor. So we're going to be rolling three dice when attacking with daggers or katars. So we're going to go ahead and roll these up. I need a six, seven, but I get plus one accuracy so it goes back down to a six. So I need sixes in order to hit this thing. Let's see how we do. We got two hits and one is a perfect hit, which means that she is going to gain a plus one strength token until she is knocked down, which is awesome. So I'm going to put that there, remind myself that I get that plus one strength. Now we're going to go ahead and draw our two locations. We know what they are, and actually it's perfect because it's not the club one. Now, of course, we got the failure where they're going to make rude gestures at us, and we got the super dense location. We're going to do the super dense one first because I don't have to worry about it actually doing anything to me. Now, of course, this has a 15 toughness, and I have plus two strength, and I, oh, I have one more die I could have rolled. I read the wrong number. I have three speed here, so I got another hit. So, of course, we did blow straight through our club card, but that's okay. We're going to put that one in between the giant teeth and the restless tiny hands. So, I should have had three plus the one from here is four. I did that wrong. Now, we're going to go ahead and see how this goes. I get two strength. Well, I get a lot of different strength. So, we're going to go ahead and start right here with our giant teeth. Let's see how we do. Roll this up. And a five. So now we can do our math. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. I believe is all I'm going to get. Yep, fourteen. Unless I did my math wrong. Two, four, six, seven, eight, nine plus five is fourteen. That's not quite enough. It has sixteen minus one is twelve. Thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Toughness. So we missed the giant teeth. That's okay. I'm not too worried about missing the giant teeth because, well, it would have been kind of cool to hit anything. All right, we're going to go for our restless ear. Let's see how that goes. I got a lantern 10. That's a critical hit. Let's see what that does to this thing. The critical 10 is persistent injury, dazed. If the monster would draw an AI card, roll a D10, a result of 8 plus the screaming antelopes confuses itself and instead makes a full move forward in a straight line. I don't know if that's that great. That's going to be making him a lot more chaotic. All right, we're going to put that down in our persistent injury area, which for me is on top of the eye deck because otherwise I will forget this. All right, we're going to go on to our last one here, which is the restless tiny hands. Let's see how we do with that one. Oh, we missed with that. So it's going to make rude gestures. I'm going to gain an insanity, but I have to spend an activation before I can activate my next weapon. So we're just going to surge right now to go ahead and allow myself to get my composure back. So she's going to go down to a total of eight survival on her dice. One was to dash, and now I'm using one to get my composure back. I am going to gain plus one insanity, bringing my insanity up to six. But since I ended next to him, I'm going to lose three, so I'm down to three. Good news is we did do one damage to the antelope because of our critical hit on the restless ear. Now, I might be doing this wrong. We're going to see how this goes. When a survivor with five or less courage ends their activation adjacent to the screaming antelope, they suffer one brain damage per monster level. So I finished my activation here. So I lose my three insanity or three, sorry, my three brain damage. But now I'm going to use my surge, which is going to give me an activation to go ahead and get my composure back. Does that mean again I'm ending it next to this antelope and I'm going to lose three? If so, let me know in the comments below, but I'm actually just going to play it where it's my movement and activations are what is going to be the thing that triggers them. The surges and the dashes, I don't think are going to activate that. If I'm wrong, please let me know and I'll make sure to make a big correction in the, <laughs> in the video. All right, we've got him left. He's going to move one, two, three, four, five. No, nope, he's just going to move right there. That's just fine. Let's move right to there and he's going to go ahead and swing with his butcher's cleaver and see how he does. Our Butcher's Cleaver is going to let us roll 
two dice, and we need to see if we can get a five or better. Now, of course, it's got plus one evasion, so it's six or better, but I do have plus one accuracy, so it's back to a five or better. Let's see how this goes. We got a total of two hits. That's awesome. All right, we're going to go ahead and see where we hit our screaming antelope. We have hit him in the giant mouth, why not? And also in the restless shoulder. Wound, your blow cripples the screaming antelope shoulder and it jumps back. Turn to face the attacker and without turning, move the monster one space directly away from the attacker. Cancel all hits now out of range. That's terrible, I don't wanna wound that location. Next, we've got a reflex. If the attacking with a melee weapon and the roll for the results one or two, the monster consumes the weapon, archive this gear and cancel the attack. If the attack is fist and tooth, the dismembered severe injury. Oh my gosh. All right. Well, he's not. He's using a thing. We're going to go ahead and do it in that order because I'm, I don't like either of these cards. I wish I could draw new ones for him. All right. We're going to roll these up, see how we do. Now, of course, I'm going to be getting plus five strength from my cleaver. So we got a total of nine plus five. Now, I don't think he has any luck whatsoever. So he's only going to be able to get the wound. But he's, he's going to deal with a reflex, but that's okay. I didn't roll a one or two. I was able to wound this location because nine plus five is 14. Plus he's got two extra strength, 14, 15, 16. That's enough to wound it. All right, let's see how we do on this one. I either want a critical wound or a miss. Let's see how this goes. I got a three. Okay, I did miss, which is fine. I'm glad he actually didn't hit him because I didn't. It would have turned around and actually ran, ran right into Morel, which would have been terrible. So we're gonna place both of our cards right here. We did do one wound, so everybody's wounding at least once. It's not too bad. Now the only person left is going to be Gold Moon. Is it worth attacking? She needs to get like natural tens in order to actually wound this guy because she has nothing else that's really able to help her. Huh, it's a tough choice. I think we're gonna leave her where she is. We're gonna move on to our Screaming Antelope and see how he does. Now where we sit, Gold Moon has nine survival. Everybody else has eight. I have to roll this die. If the monster would draw an AI card, roll a d10 on an eight plus, he moves forward in a straight line instead. And he got a four, so he is gonna draw an AI card. Let's see what our antelope is gonna do to us. Chow down. If there are no acanthus plants on the showdown board, discard chow down and perform a basic action. Terrible. Full move the screaming antelope to the closest acanthus plant. If the monster ends its movement on or adjacent to an acanthus plant, it consumes and, and archive this terrain, perform a heal D5, oh, barf. Heal D5, move top five cards from the AI deck to the, without looking. Place chow down on top of the monster's AI deck instead of discarding it. Oh, this is absolutely terrible, wow. All right, well, we're gonna go ahead and, I guess, chow down. The closest that can this plant is right here. Oh, I wish I would've got it. Well, no, we just would've ran somewhere else. So he's gonna go one, two to right here and end on that acanthus plant that's going to be awesome it's going to send this guy it's going to knock him down i think is what's going to happen now one thing i could do is i could have dashed with him but i'm not going to we're going to leave him right where he is he's going to go ahead and eat this acanthus plant and now he's going to heal d5 hit points we're going to take a d10 divide it by two and roll it up we got a five divided by two is four Four divided by two is two, or whatever. We got two. <laughs> We're healing them, too. So I got to mix up. It means we only did one wound. Well, there's the one wound we did. Wow, chow down's terrible. All right, we got to take that card out. So now this thing, I think, goes back on top, right? Place chow down on top of the monster AI deck instead of discarding it. So we can go ahead and put it right there. Now, at any time, I could have done some survival actions in there, but I didn't. And I don't know if that's the right idea, but we're going to go ahead now and move into his Diabolical, which he is now going to, at the end of the monster's turn, he is going to pick a random survivor in the trample zone. Who's going to be our lucky survivor? He's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. 1, 2, 3, it's going to be our new character, Fendurin. We're going to go ahead and he's going to get trampled on. And he's not going to be able to get out of the way of this because this thing can move eight squares. Oh, barf. All right, so we're going to go ahead and see what it says here. At the end of this, the monster full move through the target. Move the monster through and past the survivor. If there's no target, full move forward. All right, so we're going to go ahead and take care of this. So before I do, he has to lose three in Sandy, bringing him down to three. I forgot about his legendary horns card. So he's down to three in Sanity. But now I have to decide if anybody's going to dash after this thing. I don't, he's just going to get trampled on. There's nothing I can do about this. All right, it's going to move straight through him. One, two, like, I can't even run away from him because I can only move five. This thing moves eight. One, two, what is it? One, 
Let's see if I can count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven off the board. He's just right over here. This person gets trampled on, Blah, bonk. He gets collided, so he gets fall down. And now I'm gonna take trample damage, which means I'm gonna take event, was it? Collides with the survivor, they suffer damage equal to the monster's level at a random hit location. Awesome, let's see what he got hit at. The feet, it's always the feet. So he's gonna take three damage to the feet, bringing his armor down to three in that location. Going into our turn, I'm gonna have Gold Moon go ahead and go down to eight survival, and she is going to go ahead and stand him up. He's, she's gonna encourage him. He's now gonna go ahead and use that movement on the Screaming Coat to go ahead and activate this slam maneuver. So he's gonna go one, two, three, four, and slam into this target, moving him one square that way. And that's gonna be the plan. Unless I wanna move him this way. Now if I move him this way, that means he's gonna be adjacent, he's gonna fall down, and he's gonna take three brain damage. I don't think that's a good idea. We're gonna move him that way. I'm not adjacent to this character because I believe adjacency, oh no, I am adjacent to him. This is still considered adjacent. I'm not actually adjacent in this location. According to adjacency, it says a miniature is adjacent to another when it occupies a space in a cardinal non-diagonal direction from a square occupied by another miniature. So if I do do it in that direction, he is not considered adjacent. So I don't have to deal with any of that. I'm not gonna go ahead and make my extra movement to get the plus strength and everything. We're just gonna go ahead and stab him with the Lance of Longinus from there with my action. I'm not using any surges or any dashes. I can do this all in one action. Firidin is going to need a six plus. It's a plus one evasion token, but I have the plus one accuracy. So let's see how we do. We got a total, oh, we got one hit. That'll be awesome. Let's see what it is. Hope that's enough to get rid of that card. It's a furry tail. Good, let's just strike the magnificent furry tail. Come on, furry tail. Oh, I got a lantern 10 on the furry tail. I love that. Let's see what it says here. Gain one screaming antelope resource. The screaming antelope is off balance. The monster gains a negative one accuracy token. Awesome. And of course, I forgot my Lance of Longinus. Each showdown, the first time you would wound the monster, gain negative one toughness token. So instead, I am going to remove one of the toughness tokens from this monster, meaning I probably would have done one more damage. There was one I missed by just one, and I forget which one it is. But we have plus one, two tokens right now. It normally has three, but because I slammed into him, I put one back over on the showdown board where his tokens are. We're gonna place the negative one accuracy token again over where all our tokens are. And of course we get a screaming random antelope resource. It's gonna be awesome to mix these up a little bit. And I'm just gonna take this one right here. Let's see what we have found. We have found a giant flat tooth. When you gain this, a survivor of your choice gains plus one insanity. Oh, of my choice. That's going to be awesome. I'm going to give it to Morel because she only has three insanity, which means she's going to be able to take not as much as all of our other characters. So this will bring her up to four insanity, which is going to be pretty good. Now, he's going to go ahead and surge this Lanch of Longinus, meaning he's going to go down to seven survival but that's okay i have that's what it's for is to use it i need to get a six plus let's see how we do we got another hit now sadly that's not a perfect hit and i don't think i get anything for a perfect hit with him let's see what we got we've got the restless chest turn the screaming antelope to face in the attacker and full move forward in a straight line oh no Screaming antelope to face the attacker. And, oh, actually, that might be really good. I have to wound this. That would be awesome. All right, let's see if we're able to wound it. We got a 5 plus 9 is 14. And it has 12, 13, 14, plus he get an extra 2. So that's enough. He has wounded him with this as well. We wounded him twice. Now we have to go ahead and do the wound on this card. But before we do that, we're going to go ahead and place our two cards there. This lance is awesome. We're already back to three wounds on our card, and we know that one of them was the chow down card, so we got rid of it. We're going to turn our antelope, move him eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, really? He's going to stand right on him. I think I will encourage him. I'm going to go ahead and encourage him with Morel. Morel's going to go down to seven survival and encourage this guy to stand up because I can do this during a reflex. I can do this during between the, this attack that I damaged him with and this actual reaction on the card. So in between the reaction, I am gonna encourage this guy to stand up and move right here because this thing's gonna end right there and I don't want him ending on him. And he's gonna have to dash to get over there. So he's gonna go down to seven survival, but he might be able to keep it. Let's see what he gets. He does, he gets to keep his survival at eight. The only thing left he can do is dash. 
So he's done. I'm going to let him stay right there. Maybe he'll dash up, but I think from where he is, I think he's going to stay right there. Maybe keeping some survival might be good. Hmm, now comes the tough part. I think we're going to go ahead and cat eye circle with that guy over there because I want to know what's coming with these hit location cards. If I get into those club the club the antelope cards, I might be able to move him or her right in. So he's going to go ahead and just use his activation to do this. We have found pallet failure. The giant moth snaps shut. If you are adjacent to the monster, you must spend one survival to quickly react quickly or suffer three damage. Failure. If you're attacking with a melee weapon, it is kicked out of reach of the screaming antelope's thrashing hooves. Spend an action to get it back. All right. And a reflex. Screaming antelope frantically kick attacks everything around it. One time attack each survivor. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to put these back in this order, I think, is the way we're going to do it. Yes. That'll be fine. We're going to put them in that order. This one is a failure, though. If attacking the melee weapon, it is kicked out of the reach of the screaming antelope. All right. Um, okay, yep, we're fine. We're going to do it in this, this order, totally fine. He's now going to use his action to attack that Screaming Antelope with his, was it, the Butcher's Cleaver. He's not in the blind spot, so he has to roll two dice, and he needs to get a five plus. He's got plus one accuracy, but he has plus one evasion. Let's see how we do. Oh, we didn't hit him. That's terrible. All right, he's going to go ahead and surge, so I'm going to roll to see if I get my survival back. I did. He's going to surge that Butcher's Cleaver, and let's see how we do. I really need to hit. Oh, I didn't hit with anything. That's terrible. I was hoping he could get rid of that card. Now, Kaz does have a move left, so he's going to move one, two, three, four, five. No, that's going to be terrible. He's going to get out of the way of this thing. He's going to move one, two, three, just right up there. He'll be fine right up there. Now, we're going to go ahead and use her. One, two, three, four, five, right over to here, and she's going to go ahead and make the attack. The reason I am is because we know that first one means he's going to turn and attack her, which is going to be perfect because she could jump right on in and attack. That's going to be our plan. We're going to use our blood paint and our shield and screaming mace or whistling mace to go ahead and attack. But I'm going to use again the round shield and keep up my block. And we're going to go ahead and use three dice. I need a six plus. Let's see how we do. We hit with one. That is exactly what I needed. Now it would have been a six, five, four because I do get to attack or five because I get to attack my blind spot. But he gets a plus one evasion. So I only hit once, which is just fine because this is the card I wanted to have actually happen. We're going to go ahead and see if we wound it. I don't think we're going to. We got an 8, 9, 10, 11, and she gets 12, 13. She, 12, oh no, 13, 14. Oh, it's got 14. Wow, I needed a 9 to wound this thing. Well, that's okay. It's going to now attack us, which is just fine. This is exactly what I wanted to do. It's going to go ahead and make its attack. It's got a 2 speed, so it's going to attack us with 2 dice. Plus it has, what, 1, 2, 3, 4 of these things. 1, 2, 3, 4 speed tokens. So he's going to gain 4 more dice. Do I even have that many dice? Oh, I do. What do you know? All right, so he gets all these dice. This is going to be awesome. Now, it does have a negative 1 accuracy token. So it needs a 2, 3. I'm in the tall grass. So that's going to give me an extra 2, I think. 2, yep. Plus two, so now it needs a three, four, five, and I've got my monster grease six. It needs a six plus in order to hit me. Let's see how we do. Hopefully we do pretty good. Let's see what we're doing. Six plus, he hit me with one, two, three, wow, four. Four times he hit me. Okay, I get to block one of these. That's fantastic. We blocked one, and that's all I'm gonna be able to do. Wow, he's going to be able to rock me for a lot of damage here. All right, so he hit me in three different places. I don't have anything I can do about this. All right, he hit me body, feet, and hands for a total of one, two, three damage to each one of these locations. Hands, feet, and body. Hands, feet, and body. So that means we're going to take three to the arms, bringing it down to five, the body, and also to the legs, they're both going to go to three. Now, she's got a lot of defense on this stuff, which is pretty cool. Now, she did enter activation next to him, so she's going to lose three in Sandy, going from 11 to 10, 9, 8. And I probably forgot to tell you, she has a crab and a fresh acanthus, and Morel also has a crab and a fresh acanthus as well. So if we ever need to use these to heal ourselves or gain survival back, we totally can. The only person that doesn't have anything is Kaz. Kaz has absolutely nothing. I didn't give him any of these extra things. After that brutal onslaught, she's going to go ahead and move one, two, three, four, five to right here, and she's going to go ahead and attack in the blind spot against this screaming antelope. Oh, I forgot. This thing actually turns to attack, so she's going to be able to attack her from right there. That'll be just fine. I'm going to gain my four dice, 
We're going to see how these go. I need a 6 plus. I'm in the blind spot, so I need a 5 plus. Plus, I get extra accuracy, so I need a 4 plus and an evasion token, so I need a back up to a 5 plus. Let's see how we do. We hit three times, and one of them is a perfect hit yet again. So we're going to gain another plus one strength token, bringing her up to plus two strength tokens, which is awesome. Now let's go ahead and see where she hit the screaming antelope. She has hit him in the restless eye, the palate, and the restless hooves. We knew about those two. I was really worried this might be the trap. First strike. The Screaming Antelope's massive eye glistens with human-like fear. If the attacker is insane, cancel all hits and end their attack. Otherwise, the attacker suffers one brain damage. Oh, no, that's terrible. Oh, barf. All right, so all three of these are gone. I don't even get to do them. Oh, that's terrible. All right, so she gets plus one strength token. I am going to go ahead and surge then with her since she's standing right there. And she's going to use her five dice or four dice to get three more hits. All right, let's see what three hits she was able to do. She got... The Restless Shank. Oh, I bet this is the trap. Here it is. Yep. Oh, barf. Here's the trap. All right. Let's see what it says. I'm doomed. The attacker, uh, all survivors. Okay. The Screaming Antelope panics. It's undermouth unleashing an inhuman wail. It bucks wildly and leaps into the air. The attacker is doomed. All survivors adjacent to the monster suffer two brain damage per monster level and knockback five and are knocked down. The monster lands on the belly and begins to slide on its teeth. Un Turn the monster directly away from the attacker and full move forward in a straight line. On collision, non-deaf survivors gain one random disorder and in addition to normal collision rules. All right, so I'm not sure if this can be legal, and if it isn't, please let me know. We're going to go ahead and deal with this. We're going to go down to six survival for Morel before we go any farther. Now we have to deal with all of this. So he's going to go ahead and knock these people back five and are knocked down. So one, two, three, four, five, and knocked down. She's going to go one, two, three, four, and is knocked down. Now this person, now the, the antelope's going to turn away from the attacker and full move in a straight line. Any person that this person run that this thing runs into is going to gain a random disorder in addition to the normal collision rules. Now, I'm not exactly sure if this is going to be legal, but we're going to give it our best shot. Of course, I do have to give both of these characters two brain damage, knocking gold wounds down to eight, seven, six, and it also knocks morels down to two, which is actually okay. But that we'll see how this all goes. Actually, I think I need to read my card again. It says, suffer two brain damage per monster level. So that's six brain damage they're suffering. So actually, I'm going to have to get rid of all of Gold Moon's insanity. She's going to be going down to two. Morel, of course, is going to lose all of it. And she's going to go ahead and have to take a random dis a roll on the brain trauma table. Let's go ahead and see what happens to Morel. Morel got a five. So she has dealt with a danger seizure. She's going to go ahead and thrash about wildly, dealing one damage to herself and any adjacent survivor. There are none, but she's going to gain a random disorder and D5 insanity. So we're going to go ahead and shuffle up our disorder deck here. Give it a good old truffle shuffle here, see what we get. We're going to draw this one, and it is Hoarder. Whenever you are returning survivor, archive one resource gained from the last showdown and gain one courage. You know what? Actually, it's not too bad. So she has become a Hoarder. I also have to roll for our insanity. We got a total of five divided by two is, or four, two is going to be 2.5, which means she's going to gain three insanity, which isn't going to be, well, it could be just enough to not have to do it again. Now, here's where I'm going to be tricky. I don't believe Kaz has encouraged anybody yet. He's going to encourage her because technically he's not doomed. She is. Oh, but I don't think there's a... No, there's no survival action between this. She's just going to get run over again. Oh, this is terrible. So this thing's going to turn away from the attacker and move in a forward in a straight line. It's going to go eight. One, two, three, four, five, then whatever. Wonk, right into her. And she's going to go sliding on down the board here, according to about five. One, two, three, four, five, over to here. She's going to suffer uh, collision, and then which means she's going to get trampled, which means she's going to take... D3 hits to her hands. On top of this, she's going to gain a disorder. Losing three more to the arms is going to go ahead and put her at two body armor left in the arms. She's going to go ahead and gain a random disorder because of our trap card. It says right down here, 
Uh, the monster lands on its belly, begins to slide on its teeth, turn the monster directly away from the attacker. On a full move forward in the straight line, on a collision, non-deaf survivors gain one random disorder in addition to the collision rules, which would be awesome. So here's our random disorder. It's going to be awesome. We're going to give it a good old shuffle here and see what we get. We have found seizures. During the showdown, whenever you suffer damage to your head location, you are knocked down. Okay, I guess that's not too bad. The other thing I have to mention is Morel is going to lose those plus one strength tokens because, of course, she did get knocked down. We got a super panned out view here because everything's all over the place. We'll go ahead and shuffle our hit location deck up again. And now it's going to be our antelope's turn because I really don't think there's anything else anybody could do. He could still dash, and I believe he might have an action left, but it's not really going to matter. She's on the ground, and she's on the ground. Eh, done. We're going to go ahead and draw our next card, but before we do, we have to roll our die and see what we get. We got an 8+. plus. It's not going to draw an AI card. Instead, the monster is confused itself. Instead, move forward full move forward in a straight line. Well, the sad thing is it kind of disrupts some of my plans. All right, it's gonna move forward in a straight line, meaning I'm gonna go ahead and have him encourage. He's gonna go ahead and encourage her to a six, or he's gonna spend his survival to a six, encouraging her because this thing's gonna come running straight this way. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight over in the corner. I don't want that to happen, so she's actually gonna to run to about here, I guess. I think that'll be fine. Um, and that'll be her dash. I'm going to dash her over to there. So that means Goldman's going to go down to a 7. And then that's going to be her dash, his encourage, and I believe that's going to be it. Now, of course, his Diabolical fires off, which is really weird because it full move forward through the target move monster through. Okay. At the end of the monster's turn, target a random survivor in the trample zone. There isn't any in the trample zone. Full move through the target, move the monster through and pass the survivor. If there is no target, full move forward. So I guess it's going to go right back. Oh, in that case, I'm actually going to have her dash. One, two, three, four, five over to here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight to right there. So she can actually run up and maybe hit it. I don't know if she can't really do anything with her sword and shield or anything like that. But all right, that's going to be the end of its turn from what I understand. Now it's going to be our turn. And we're going to start by having Kaz go ahead and surge his cat eye circlet to see if he can see what's coming next. He doesn't have to spend any survival. He's still at eight. We're going to go ahead and look at our top three locations because if it's anything about clubbing this thing, I'm going to have her go and attack. Otherwise, I'm going to have him go and attack. Let's see what we have found. We have found the giant tongue, negative two toughness to win this location. If you hit with a club or shield, you clobber the monster, gain plus two luck. Yeah, this is the person that's going to attack now. Failure. If the attacker is adjacent to the monster, their weapon is stuck, tugging, oh, knock back five. All right, we're going to put him in that order right there. That'll be fine. And she is going to go. She's going to move right here, and then she's going to attack. She's going to use her blood paint whistling mace, and she's going to go ahead and block, of course, with that shield because that's awesome. I don't know how good that's actually helped us. It helped us once. And now she's going to attack with three dice, needing a six, five, Needing a five. She needs a five plus, and she hit with a perfect hit. Let's see what that AI card is and see if we need to deal with this. It is bite. I'm going to go ahead and keep that on top. That's fine. We're going to put that back on top, and now we're going to go ahead and hit with two locations, which I believe are the two locations I wanted to hit. It's the negative two toughness and the club. We're going to go with the club one first. Let's see how this goes. Now, she doesn't get anything else with a perfect hit, but that's okay. We're going to go ahead and roll our die. Come on. Big number. We got a five. That's not enough. Five, six, seven, eight. I mean, I don't know why I'm counting. Eight, nine, ten. Yeah, not enough. All right. We failed again to hit the thing. Now, this is negative two. I might actually wound this location. Let's see how it goes. Nope, we got a four. Didn't wound anything at all. Goldman's going to lose three in Sandy because she ended adjacent to him, meaning she has absolutely no in Sandy whatsoever. It's time for Fearnden to come, Fandon to come in. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. I'm going to dash and move, bring his survival down to five, and he's going to attack with that Lance of Longinus, and because it has a reach of two, it can actually reach from there. Our Lance of Longinus is going to go ahead and get six plus to hit. Now, it gets its plus one toughness token back because I wasn't able to do my super charge against it. It's slam attack. I do get to roll two dice, and let's see how we go. We got an eight and a four. We only hit once, but you know, once is better than none, especially if you can wound it. Oh, this is that failure one. We already know what this was. All right, 
we need to actually do a good wound on this guy. Let's see. What we do. Oh, we got a nine. Does he have any luck? He does not. Oh, he does have plus one luck right here. Oh, check this out. He's got his plus one lucky charm. Oh, there we go. They're not just for kids. They're for him too. All right. He gets to go ahead and deal with the critical here. It says gain one screaming antelope resource. Crushed crown. Blood pours from the ruined crown. Affects some AI cards. All right. That's going to be awesome. I'm going to gain a screaming antelope resource. So we're just going to go ahead and draw the top card and see what we got. We got a pelt. All right, he's going to keep that pelt, and he's going to continue on. He's going to go ahead and surge, bringing his survival down to four, which is just fine. We're going to go ahead and see what we can do. I need to hit him real good. We got another one hit. That's totally fine. I don't have anything that's going to give me plus to that, but that's okay. Let's see what we found. We have found the Restless. Oh, first strike. I'm insane, I bet. Yeah, well, I'm totally insane. So I'm just going to go ahead with your cancel all hits. And the attacker suffers one brain damage. Well, at least it was only one hit anyway. All right, so I'm going to go down to 12 insanity on him. I did forget to stand her up, and she, because that was at the end of the monster's activation, she should have stood up. She's going to move one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five to right here, so she can get in there, attack, and then probably suffer a lot of brain injury. We'll see how it goes. Her knife allows her to roll four dice. Let's see how we do. We got an eight, eight, seven, one. So our two eights and our seven are going to hit. Let's see what locations we have hit our screaming antelope. The furry throat, you hit them with a club or shield. Oh, well, that's not going to happen. All right. Oh, another club and shield one. That's too bad. Oh, no, look at this one. The reflex is going to go ahead and attack everybody. Well, well, we'll put that at the bottom, I guess. We're going to go ahead and take a look at, well, what am I doing? Put them in this order. I'll go ahead and start attacking them like this. Let's see how we do with our first one. Our first one is a four. I don't think that's a hit. I think I need a six or something in order to wound him. So we're going to go ahead and put that off to the side. Let's see what our next one is. We got a seven. That's enough, I believe. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Let's see how we do here. Two, four, five, six, seven, eight. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, which is just enough. 12, 13, 14, 15. Wow, we need a 7 plus right hit to wound this guy. So we did wound with that card. Now we're going to go ahead and see how we do with our last one. No matter what, this is going to do damage to us. Yes, we wounded that one too. So that's two wounds, and then he's going to go ballistic on us. Two more wounds come off the stack against our screaming antelope, and then, of course, our reflex is going to fire off. Here we go. We're going to go ahead and use our basic action. It's two, three, four, five, six dice again out of control. I wish there was a way to slow that down. We're going to go ahead and attack Morel first, I guess. It needs a two plus, and I've got one evasion, so it's a three plus. Not as good as our other character. Let's see how it does. Well, it missed with two, so it got us four times. It's going to do three damage to four different locations. All right, let's see what four locations going after. Oh my gosh, two of them are the head. That's devastating. We also got a body and a hand, and I can't dodge any of this because this is happening on my attack. So this is going to be pretty bad. I'm going to take six damage to the head, which is going to knock me down. I was really hoping it wouldn't. Now, of course, I also have to suffer three insanity because I ended my activation adjacent to the monster. I'm also going to take three to the body, which is going to be enough to remove all that, and three to the arms, which is going to bring it down to one. Wow big trouble. She's in big, big trouble. I also have to lose a survival for dashing. I don't believe I did that. So we're going to go down to five. Now it's time to attack Gold Moon. Let's see how we do. It missed, missed. I believe this is a miss. One, two, three, four. No, this four is going to hit. So I got to hit four times. My block goes off. I get to block one of these. I'm going to hit three locations. Let's see how this goes. The bot, double body and one in the waist. Now, Gold Moon is not the active survivor right now, so she can use survival to go ahead and dodge one of these. And I think that's what she's going to do. She's going to dodge that body shot and only take one to the body and one to the waist, meaning she's going to lose all her armor in her body and she's going to move three in the waist. So she's down to three left. Wow, this thing's really doing some damage. That's going to also knock her over because she took too much damage to the head. The only person I have left is him. He's going to move one, two, three, and he's going to surge now to see if he can go ahead and use that butcher's cleaver. And he loses the survival, so he's going to go down to seven survival. All right, let's see what he can do. We're going to go ahead and roll up our dice. I need to roll five or better. Let's see how this goes. 
I need a six or better actually because it's got a plus one evasion token, but I do have plus one accuracy. So only the five or better, but sadly the two still misses. We're gonna go ahead and see how we do. He's gonna go ahead and take a hit to the, what is it? Restless tiny hands. Let's see if he can wound this location. He got a two, we did not. So he's gonna gain a plus one insanity and he has to spend an activation in order to regain his composure. To do that, I am gonna flip his butcher cleaver over to signify that I can't use it until I spend an action. Of course, he ended his activation adjacent to this monster, so he's gonna lose three in Sandy, meaning he can't even use the Butcher Cleaver, so I'm also going to flip my Hunter's Whip over so I don't use that, and the Cat Eye Circle it to remind myself I can't use any of that. We're completely done with three rounds, and we've been just suffering through these three rounds. He healed himself. We haven't done as much damage as I was really hoping for, but we're going to continue fighting on. But we're going to do that in the next video. We've made it to three rounds with the Screaming Antelope, and this is a great place to stop. You've seen some mass problems that we were having. I don't know if we're going to be able to get through this one. We're really taking a beating, but we've gotten through five of his 22 cards, which means we might have a chance but we'll see how it goes. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and don't forget to hit that bell symbol so you know when the next part of our playthrough comes out. Also, please feel free to leave anything in the comments below. I would love to hear from everyone. Do you think we have what it takes to beat this Screaming Antelope, or do you think he's gonna take us down? I'd love to hear what you have to say. And if you're excited to see what happens, then I need you to meet me at the table.